Hi. Welcome to Designs for Zen, Gretzko Yoga Part 2, Protein Doubled. So we are going to go through an hour of yoga practice today, focusing on Gretzko itself, the animals, and a relaxed hatha or hatha style, which is pretty much just like we're not going to do a lot of vinyasa. It's going to be slow. It's going to be very introductory level, so I'll explain a lot about where we're going. So I see we've got some folks in the chat. Definitely check out, I'll put it one more time. There is, it's the same one as we've used before for Gretzko. I might do a new one for this moon stream that's Labor Day weekend on Saturday the 5th. We're gonna be having a full half day of really cool panels, discussions about Gretzko, more yoga, and um, a few special treats and special guests. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I'll probably do a new music theme for that. But for this one, you can play that or anything fun. Nothing too intense and nothing too calm. Or you can just live with the silence. It's fine. <laughs> so to get started, we're going to make sure that you've got yourself a mat. And let me make sure that looks okay for you guys. Oh, look at how good I am. I'm really starting to figure this all out here. So again, I am Riffling Designs. I am a certified yoga instructor who really, really loves to do cosplay. So here you have my yoga instructor in all his glory. And we are going to do a little bit of protein. So the joke this time for our Gretzko go protein yoga is anytime we do a push-up style chaturanga, you know, just like he does, we'll go protein. <laughs> again, this is your practice. The best part about yoga is that you can do whatever you want, whether that's literally just laying down and breathing, or uh, you can add any more intensities or any other movements that you find that you need. So have a mat or at least a carpet or something soft, a, a towel. I like to have blocks nearby in case you need them for balance or stability. Water, definitely. <laughs> Hydrate. And that's really all you need to get started here. And in yoga, the first thing we were going to do is come to our breathing. So yoga is a style of exercise. It is many different things and many people interpret it in different ways. The way that I'll be teaching this yoga is to listen to yourself. And the way that I do that is by comparing it to the extremely calm painter, Bob Ross, who I tend to host here on twitch.tv. And Bob Ross says that everything you do is correct. Any mistakes you make are also lovely and that you can make those into something beautiful. So I do not say that you need to be a pretzel. You should not try and be as flexible as me. You be as flexible as you. Do what your body wants you to do and only do that much. Never compare yourself. And that's the thing about yoga online is that people make these amazing poses and it looks good in the picture, but it's not for everyone. Find out what works for you. So now that you're in your comfy seat, just roll your shoulders back. Maybe roll your head from side to side. Just kind of get comfy. We'll do some stretching after we get started here. But just really find a nice seat. Some people like to sit on a blanket or a block so your hips are a little higher. If cross-legged doesn't work for you, find that position that does. A lot of this can also be done in a chair. And I have done chair yoga in the past as well. So find something that, again, works for you. So now that we're here, let's start to really get in touch with where we're at for the day. It's the end of a long weekend, long month, long year. Just notice your thoughts and notice your breathing. Whatever it is is fine and you have the power to change it. So begin to focus on your breath, noticing if you keep it up in your chest, your shoulders, maybe put your hands on your belly, 
And if you haven't yet, maybe focus on deepening your breaths and drawing it into the belly. I'm going to offer a count for the breathing. If it works for you, go right ahead. If it's too fast or too slow, you can mute me and do your own thing. So inhale, two, three. Exhale, two, three. Inhale, two, three. Exhale, two, three. Inhale, two, three. Exhale, two, three. Let's slow it down. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four. Continue on. If you need to go slower or faster, balancing the inhales with the exhales. Again, maybe you roll your shoulder blades back and down. Just focus on your inhale, maybe lengthening a little bit more. Focusing on the belly. Trying to make those breaths even so you still have a little bit of air on your exhales and you're drawing in air all the way until you're done with your inhales. Keep going. If you'd like, on your exhales, you can begin to breathe through your throat in what's called an ujjayi breath. It kind of sounds like you're, you're breathing like the ocean, fogging up a mirror. So it's like you're really kind of rasping. And it can be with your mouth open to start. Continue with the long inhale. And if you'd like, you can try to do it with your mouth closed. It actually goes into your sinuses that way. It's kind of wild. Again, do what works for you. <laughs> if you're doing that fogging, that ujjayi breath, you'll feel some warmth begin to build in your throat. Your blood, your circulation will start to increase. So one of the benefits of yoga is that it does help to regulate your breathing and your blood pressure. If you have any medical issues with breathing or blood pressure, consult your doctor before practicing any yoga routine. That being said, I do have asthma myself and I found that both running and yoga has helped me with continuing to increase that capacity of my lungs. All right, come back to your normal breathing, whatever normal is for you. And just to kind of feel where you're at. So this is our start and we're going to be doing about another 45 minutes worth of yoga and then we're going to cool down together and give you a nice calm way to end your weekend. So today we had discussed on the other channel, Smooth Co, which again is going to be hosting our Smooth Stream in a couple weeks, season two of Agretico and this is protein yoga. So let's talk about what happened. There were two main lessons that Agretico found. First of all, that people that make her rage, like an eye, aren't always bad. They can be misunderstood, and they may have good qualities to share if you actually get to know them. And second, even friends can have conflicts, such as Gori and Washimi, who are Retsuko's best friends, when they were arguing about how to deal with relationships. So people that make you angry aren't always bad. They can be misunderstood. And... Dealing with relationships often is associated with how you deal with your own needs. So we're talking about relationships. This yoga session is going to focus on rele releasing your rage and then also finding your balance with relationships and with yourself 
And to make it fun, we're going to do yoga poses based off of the animals that are in the show. So if you don't know Agretzico, you hopefully know Zootopia. I'm actually thinking of doing a Zootopia one too, but this is going to be a Gretzico character based. So to get started, oh, I know I got to get my breathing going here. Inhale, arms up, reaching up, just using your shoulder blades here. Exhale, hands down, shining, stretching through the fingertips. Really tall here. Inhale one more time up. Maybe you look up if it's okay for your neck. And then draw your hands down to center. We're going to seal our practice today with one big breath. So first we're going to do a normal inhale and exhale. And then we're going to do a big inhale and just let it all go. And we're going to start with Retsuko herself. So today, this normal lotus position or cross-legged position is going to be Retsuko. She's kind of a normal office worker, 25 years old, we found out today, working in the office for five years. But the fun part about a Retsuko is that she also has a hidden rage. So what we're going to start off with, now that we've done our calm breathing, I know it's going to be weird, but we're actually going to have what's called the Tantrum Asana, which is something I learned from my teacher, where you guys are fun because you can't hear me or see me. All you're going to do is just like let it out. If you need to scream, dance, run around in a circle, like whatever it is that you need to do. And being mindful of my microphone here, <laughs> let me just, uh, there we go. Okay. So in this, you really just want to go, rage! Okay, just scream it out. Scream it out. Do whatever you need. Do a couple of those big breaths in. Rah! If you want to, get down like a kid and just bang your feet and legs. Ah! Shake your head out. Find any movements that you need to. I mean, go, ah! Actually, it feels kind of good just to... Wiggle and jiggle and rage. Protein. Right? Protein. <laughs> Just have fun with it. Oh. One more time. <sighs> that, my friends, is your tantrum asana. Do it anytime. We can call it a yoga pose. Now that we've raged out, let's do one big lion's breath. So again, shake it out. Oh. Feel how differently you feel now that you've screamed your head out. <laughs> We're gonna take an inhale and an exhale. And then on the next one, when I cue you, you're going to breathe in. Exhale, stick your tongue out and roll your eyes back. So I'll stick my face in your face here. And we'll do it once for laughs and then once for real. So inhale. <sighs> And one more time. Okay, that's lion. I'm gonna do one with the rage metal with the demon horns too. I'll make that my cover. <laughs> you guys are great. All right. So just anytime you need to do breathing, find your center. You can go Retsuko Lotus or Retsuko Rage. And again, that's all there is to yoga. Now we're going to go into cat cow. And this is a traditional stretch. It's not just used in yoga. So we're going to talk about Puko. Puko is Retsuko's friend from, uh, she tries to make an imports store. <laughs> so Puko is a cat. To do this, going on all fours. Your knees should be about hip distance apart. That's also two fists. So sometimes your hips are a little bit different. So you're gonna go hip distance apart, hands down, palms, fingers facing forward, hands under shoulders. The backs of your feet press down. Look down, keep your neck parallel. And just feel how this is here. Then cat, you exhale and arch your back. Cow, inhale, look up. The secret to doing cat cow is to focus on your chest and pushing your chest through your shoulder blades. 
and inhaling and shining your chest out. Often people articulate too much in the lower back. I was actually taught to move the tailbone, like literally move your tailbone, right? But if you move your tailbone too much, it can cause lower back issues. Surprise, surprise. So for this one, in cat cow, find any motion that you need. Maybe you need to do bigger cats or maybe you need to do smaller cats. And if you're comfortable, you can even try looking over both sides. I like to lift one hand and look the opposite way. You might want to do some circles with your hips here. This is warming up your spine. Just like Puko, make it carefree. Doing what you need. I like to do a little rocking back and forth. And I'm going to do a big one, but you don't have to go this big yet. We're going to get here later. But I like to do it just to warm up. And while we're here, why don't we have a little bit of fun. Inhale, right arm up, looking up to your hand. We're going to do what's called thread the needle. So we're threading our hand underneath. And then lower into your shoulder. Here you can stay. Extend the hand forward. Or you can take your left hand behind your back for a bind. Again, no pain. If all you can do is stay in cat cow, that's good enough for you. And then unwind. Look back up again. Plant your hand down. Other side up. Threading it under. Lowering to your shoulder. Again, find where your hand wants to go. My pose is going to look a little weird because I have my ears on. <laughs> and then unwind yourself. All right, next what we're going to do is what I'm calling the... Uh, the up and the down dog that I'm going to do for Haida, because Haida is actually a hyena, but I think that it's the closest we've got. There were a couple other ones, but we'll get to them in a little bit. So to go into up and down dog, which are traditional yoga poses, you're going to tuck your toes under, and then they'll just warm up your spine. Really feel that you're putting the weight in your hand. So around the circle, but not in it. And you're pushing with the fingers too, so you're going to have a lot of pressure here and here. You should not be putting weight in your wrist, and you should not be putting weight in the middle. So plant those hands, make them nice and strong, pushing with the fingertips, pushing with the toes, and then lifting up. Now here, keep those knees bent. You do not have to keep it straight. You do not have to be a letter A. You can be like this. It doesn't matter. I like to breathe here. Pedal your feet by lifting your heels. Shake your head, yes and no. <sighs> Big exhales if you need them. The second secret to yoga is remembering to breathe. <laughs> the first secret, of course, is doing what your body needs. Maybe really deep, just feel where you need to be. So in yoga, sometimes they say, oh, your heels should be touching the ground. Your heels do not have to touch, but you will get a deeper stretch if you straighten your legs and lower your heels. Now you should not lock your knees. Do not lock your knees. Then you can roll your shoulder blades back and down, open and like twist your elbows in a little bit and just feel it there. All right, lower your knees, take a break. Down dog is supposed to be a rest pose. <laughs> so for Haida, that is your down dog. So when you're ready, we'll do one cat for Puko, one cow, which I almost said which should be Kabai, the hippopotamus, so we can say Kabai, Puko, and we're going to go down into Haida, down dog. From here, you know we have to do this protein, so all you do is lean forward and put your weight in your hands to get to that push-up pose, and you can lower your knees if you need to, and do your little yoga push-up. Protein! Okay? Now... That we've done that. You guys can take a break as I explain this. And if you know it, go ahead and do your flow right now. You don't have to listen to me. So when you're in this push-up pose, a yoga push-up or chaturanga is where you're lowering down and your elbows are in. And you only go as far as like your elbows are at 90 degrees, no further. You should not be dumping your hip onto the ground. It should be up and in. 
And then when you go into your up dog, your feet are down, but your knees don't actually touch. It's kind of like a plank. It's very difficult. <laughs> so as you're going through it, you get your plank, chaturanga, up dog. And that's with my knees down. And then down dog is the final part of that flow. So doing it all together and feel free to join in. Protein. When you're doing that little flow, and feel free to keep doing it, your toes, again, everybody does this differently. So when I go forward, I'm on the balls of my toes. I lower down. Up dog, I flip my toes under. So they're straight again. And then down dog, there's two ways. You can actually roll over your toes to go back up. Or you can just flip them one at a time, which is much safer. <laughs> um, do what works for your feet. Protein. I told you to be protein yoga. All right, that's about as flowy as we're going to get today. So we've done our up dogs and our down dogs. Whew. Get some water already. It's kind of fun just going through the basic poses, though. Okay. Next, we're going to do Cobra. So when you're in Haida, down dog, you can go forward, knees, put your knees on the ground, chest, lower down to your chest with your elbows hugging in, chin, lower your chin to the ground. So in yoga, you'll hear that called knees, chest, chin. Then all you do is <laughs> lay flat, Put your hands underneath your shoulders and just lift up your chest. Okay, that's baby cobra. Okay, and lower it down. Lift again. Lower it down. And this time, as you're lifting, feel your upper back muscles and maybe try and lift your hands just a little bit off the ground. Just a little. Okay, that's the full expression of baby cobra. It's not right or wrong, it's just the full expression. So baby cobra is sabone. There's two other options here. Sphinx is when you take your arms, placing your elbows under your shoulders, palms down facing forward, and you look like a sphinx. Don't put too much bend in your lower back again, right? You want to take a layer? <laughs> Don't put too much weight in your lower back. Okay, so then we're going to do seal. This is for Lucille. Her name is Lucille. How funny is that? <laughs> Lucille is a spotted seal. So in this, you put your arms out, and you're actually straightening your arms. So it's it looks more like a seal. But this can be too much for some people's backs. So we've done cobra for Sabone, sphinx, and then seal. Those are all three creatures that can be done as part of a flow when they say knees, chest, chin. Now what we can do is put our hands underneath our chest, tuck our toes. All of a sudden you can get back into protein. And your up dog and your down dog. Again, you never have to do any of this. <laughs> we'll just do poses in between. But if you have full flows you want to do, stepping forward salutations, do them while I'm explaining stuff. All right. Next we have, oh, seated butterfly. So we're gonna take a little break here. For this one, you can sit on a towel or a blanket if you want. Butterfly is where instead of crossing your legs, you take your feet together. So you're making like a butterfly with your legs. There's multiple ways to do this. You can bend over, you can keep your feet. So the farther your feet are out, the easier it'll be to fold over. In this yoga pose, you want to keep your spine straight. So sit up tall and then fold over, but don't bend your back. Keep your spine straight. Your hands can be around. If you want, this is a really good place to take your blocks so that you're not lifting. You're just stretching your back and breathing. And after you do this for another... 10 or 15 seconds. If you do want to allow that bend in your back, you can then 
fold over and have a deeper stretch. Breathing here. If you're folded over, maybe focus on breathing through the back of your lungs. <laughs> This is butterfly. There should be no pain. One of the things that they talk about during yoga is finding your edge. The edge is where it's not painful and you could go a little further, but it starts to get painful. So when you find that edge, back off a little. And that is the, exactly where you should be in yoga. Not at your edge, not past your edge, but a little before your edge. That way you don't hurt yourself and you can adjust every time it's cool huh so now that we've done butterfly we're going to go into deer so straighten back up for deer it's sunoda the really cute fashionista <laughs> and so for sunoda for deer you're going to if your hips allow you and again only do what works for you so i'm going to take my right hip lifting my knee and i'm actually going to fold over to the left and kick that foot out so now I have my left knee and leg in front of me. My right knee and leg are out, and it's all pinwheeling around to the right. Okay? So this is deer. There are multiple ways to do deer, but the most important part is to keep your sits bones, so both sides of your legs, your hips, your cheeks, keep them on the ground. Sit up straight. And if it doesn't work, maybe modify where your legs are, or you can use a block. So this is not for everyone. This is Sunoda, the deer pose. And if it works, you can even try experimenting, maybe doing some circles with your back here, or maybe just modifying where your feet are, maybe just breathing. Finding your deer. Try a couple different arm moves if you want. <sighs> and inevitably, my nose starts to drip whenever I start streaming, so apologies, you guys. But I have learned to keep tissues nearby. So now we're going to switch sides. So whatever way works for you. So for me, I'm just going to kind of flip my leg in, go back to butterfly, and then flip over the other way. There's all kinds of cool ways where you can scoot and flip and do you do what works for you. So on this side, notice the difference. Keep your sits bones grounded <laughs> and find out where your hips need to be, where your legs and your ankles need to be to find deer with your pinwheel going towards the left. So for me, it's much tighter. There's no wrong way to do deer. And keep experimenting with that. I'm just going to check on chat. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it is quite the tale. Okay, we're all good. So what is your deer? <laughs> Remembering to breathe. And then untwist yourself. What we're going to go into is child's pose, so kind of do like a little rock and roll and find yourself into child's pose where your knees are wide, toes come in, and you just kind of lower back down on it and then walk your hands forward. Resting, you can have a block here if you need to, but just resting forward. Your head or your chest do not have to touch. You really want to focus on pushing the pelvis back and down here. Arms can be forward or back. Just a good neutral stretch. So this is similar to down dog Haida. And the idea here is that if you don't feel like doing down dog, this is another perfect alternative. So instead of going into down dog, which is what you traditionally do, we're going to go into puppy. And I selected for puppy for it to be Anai. <laughs> so Anai was the intern. Well, he wasn't an intern. He was a new hire. 
And he was kind of dog-like, but actually, surprise, he's a mere cat. <laughs> so he's not a dog at all. But we're going to pretend he's puppy pose. So for puppy, you're going to be straightening back up. So you're like on all fours. And then you walk your hands out. And lower your head. Now this may not work for everyone, but puppy, hips are up, legs are down, <laughs> legs, feet are down, pushing with the backs of the feet. You're really opening your chest towards the ground here. Hands forward, pressing in with the fingertips and with your toes, with the, with the tops of your feet. So puppy can be very intense, just like an eye. It sounds innocent, it sounds cute, looks cute, but getting here is not as easy. And if it's too intense, back off, go back to child's pose. Good. And then like you just kind of find your way back out of it, back to all fours. So we're right here in cat cow again, which is sort of buko and Kabai or Patricia. <laughs> so now what we're going to go into is cheetah. So Manu Maru was the wingman for the space cadet. And he was the one that went on the date with Fenico and Retsuko. And so what we're going to do for the cheetah is you're in all fours and you're going to lift one leg and push back with your foot. So your foot's actually extend. And pull your knee in. That's cheetah. This also can be done from down dog if you're one of those people that wants to do more. So that's cheetah. And now you want to focus on not leaning over to one side. <laughs> that's the hardest part is keeping your body square. So try it on the other side. Kick back. Pull your knee in. You can also <clears throat> see, sorry, the... Sometimes they'll pull like the front arm back and down. That's like a combination of moves. And I'll just show you really quick. So just play around with it. So from here, Cheetah is a little more moving of the knee and the body as you're pulling the knee to your elbow. Ooh, my hip just popped. <laughs> so that's Cheetah. So play around just another couple seconds. And then we'll go to our next pose. Okay, from here, we're gonna do bird dog. And bird dog, uh, we did not have anyone for, but that's where you literally just reach both out. So instead of pulling in like in cheetah, it's just out. And as you saw, you can flow them together and do like some ab crunches. So the balance now is that you're lifting both and holding it in bird dog. The pulling in and crunching the motion is actually easier than staying still with your arm out, fingers forward, foot back, toes flexed. Keeping your balance so you're not tilting your hips, breathing, <laughs> it's tough. Whew. Yeah. So that is cheetah and bird dog. Next, we're gonna do forward folds and then we're gonna start to slow it down. So from here, if you have a full, feel free to. I'm just gonna kick it back into down dog. We're meeting in forward fold, whatever way you wanna get there. I'm gonna walk my feet forward and then hang here. So give yourself a generous bend. Maybe grab your opposite elbows, hang from side to side. They call this rag doll. It's just a bent knee, a loose forward fold. You really want to let the lower back go. And then maybe you can straighten your knees a little bit. Just kind of feel where you're at. Normal forward fold. Another staple in yoga. And now what we're going to do is inhale, halfway lift your hands and your shins. Exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up, exhale back down all the way. We're going to go into Gorilla, this is Gory. 
So for Gorilla, it may not work for everyone if you have sensitive hands or knuckle bones or feet, really. You're going to take your hands and put your palms underneath your feet so your feet are standing in your palms. The back of your hands are on the ground. Knees bent. Your toes, your big toes, your toes should actually be almost able to massage your wrists. <laughs> and if you want, you can try and straighten your legs. It could be very tough like it is for me today. That's fine. Really just focusing on the shoulders. Draw your shoulders back and down. Keep your head and neck loose. Gorilla. This is more challenging. And then let it go. Shake out those wrists. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way up. And now we're going to go into eagle. So from here, taking your hands forward, we're going to do some eagle binds. So really what it is, is you can just stay in prayer. Or if you want, it's like the Macarena. So you take one hand out, take the other hand across it. As you're lifting up, you can try to take your hands so the palms are backwards. Or if you start up again, you kind of cross one over and try and do a twist. Any of these is correct. So find your eagle. Oh my gosh, my mic is all over the place here. I'm sorry, you guys. So your eagle arms... There we go. Eagle arms. If you want, you can do eagle legs. So if your arm that is under, that's the leg that goes over. The arm that is under is the leg that's over. And you cross over and you can try to do one leg balance. It looks like this. Then you can sink lower and lower and lower into your chair bound eagle. You don't have to. Do what works for you. And then unwind. Shake it all out. Do your tantrum again. And then we're going to do the other side. So this time, one out, the other one on top. So for me, this is the right on top. Lifting up, finding your twist. Or keep me in prayer. And then taking your left leg, the one that is, so the arm that is under is the leg that is over. Crossing over. Finding your eagle. Shoulders back and down. Maybe lift those elbows up. Maybe sink into it. This is Eagle Washimi. She is graceful and powerful and also does very complicated moves. And I'm going to apologize really quickly and blow my nose. Be right back. There should be some sort of bingo for this, I swear. Speaking of bingo, we're going to be doing a Gretzico bingo. So keep an eye on Earthworm Designs Twitter and you can get that bingo square. <laughs> All right. So we've done our eagle. Uh, here you have an option for your flow if you really want. But what we're going to be doing is slowing down now. So if you want to do one more protein, I guess I have to, don't I? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Folding. Protein. All right, wherever you are, we're going to find ourselves on the ground. You may want to have a blanket on the ground for this. Your knees are going to be used a little bit. Going into hero. So Komia, the meerkat, the assistant to the boss, Tone. We're going to do a meerkat, which is going to be hero pose. So you're sitting on your feet, right? This is one option for hero. Hands on your shins. Sitting on your feet, shoulders back, head up. Catching your breath. Another option is to go up into camel. So like meerkats, they can come up. I thought this was kind of kind of perfect for him. So you can stay here. You can put your hands on your low back and invite a gentle back bend. Or if it's in your practice, you're welcome to lower into full camel.
Breathing. All right, that's comia. Then you're gonna come down to your seat. We're gonna do hypatria number two. <laughs> so for this one, this is gonna be cow face kabai, which looks really weird. Um, there's no super good way to get into it, but I like to put my feet out in front. Then you cross one leg down, very like our butterfly we did earlier, and you're gonna bring that foot in. Take your other foot across, and if this is where you get, that's good. But otherwise, you actually pull this foot in and line up your knees. How cool is that? So you're actually crisscrossing your legs over, making a little triangle between your feet and your knees. And the last thing you can do is grab your feet. If this doesn't work, don't worry. <laughs> Any of those options will work, even seating and breathing. Really rolling your shoulders back and down. Breathing here. This is cow face. Now that we're done with all the tough work, let's start cooling down. And now we're going to switch. So again, just like butterfly and deer, find a way to roll over, put the other leg down, and then see if you can twist this way. Again, your knees may not be made for this, and if they aren't, that's fine. If you can go to any of those sections, just do what works for you. Cow face, other side. Two more breaths here. And then unwind yourself. We're going to do one more pose. This is pigeon. If you were with me last week, we relaxation pigeon. This is a big hip tone. Because <laughs> tone has pig in his name. It's just a thing, right? I mean, you got to be punny. So we're going to do pigeon for tone. You may want blocks for this. There will be multiple options. So the option number one is if you're laying on your back. You can just put one leg over the other and make like a figure four with your legs or even seated the figure four with one ankle over your knee that's one option the next we're going to come back into all fours and you can go from here or you can go from down dog but you're going to take your right leg back swing it in like you're doing cheetah then you're going to take your ankle under and you're just going to kind of flop down that's why i like to do it from down dog because you swing around more so you're kicking the back foot out and straightening. The front knee is forward, and this leg can be out parallel. I have to bend it in because I have bad knees. You may want to have a block on your hips because see how I'm tilting back and forth? You want your hips to be parallel facing forward, and I've got a little gap here, but I have enough core strength that I can hold it up. If you don't, or if you need the assistance, you can put a blanket or a towel under your hip. So for here, straighten up shoulders back and down. This is another option for pigeon. This is good enough. So it's funny, and we'll do this again next time. In the show, what they do in protein yoga is, and I have to rotate a little bit, this. They pull that back leg in, and this is what you see them all doing. They actually have their hand like this. So this, and again, don't compare. But this is what you see all of them doing in the show in, in Gretzko. A little bit more difficult, but that's kicking the back leg up from here. Now, if you want to do sleeping pigeon, which is one of my favorites, and then straightening those hips out, then you just lean forward, and it gives you a totally different stretch. And I like to take nice deep breaths in here, so hopefully I don't <laughs> don't knock you guys out with my heavy breathing. 
your shoulders. I like to put my hands in front of me, but it's whatever works for your shoulders. You can stack your hands. You can reach them out straight in front of you. You can actually have them back behind you. You can do binds. It's whatever works. And if you're in sleeping pigeon, walk yourself back up. And find your way back to your cat-cow. So some people are able to tuck their toes and kick that foot back. This is, again, where it's easier to go into down dog first. Balance yourself out. Find your way to your table. And then we're going to go on the other side. So this time, left foot's back. Cheetah in. Sweeping it through. Kind of flipping and flopping over. Kicking your right foot back. So that the top of your foot is down. Your knee of your left is going forward. And again, your leg can be parallel or pulled in. See how my hip is up again? That little gap there. I almost could use my tail as a block. <laughs> there we go. So you want your hips to be parallel. This is pigeon other side. Now let's see what it looks like from the back side in the show. You bend this knee. You hook it with your arm, and you look pretty. Easy, right? And I'm being sarcastic. Ooh, it's even tough on my muscles. Oh, right? That's it. This is pigeon show style, which is not often done in actual yoga. What we do do, sorry about that. What we do is from straight into sleeping pigeon. Keeping those hips level, again, using a block if you need. And you may not be able to do pigeon every time. You'll have one more chance on September 5th with Smooth Stream when we'll do show style pigeon one more time. A couple more deep breaths here. And then find your way back out. Again, I like to tuck the toe, walk my hands back, push up through my down dog. And that, my friends, is our Gretzikoya. So we're going to start to cool down on our backs really quickly. And you've got another 10 or so minutes. I still have my drippy nose. So from here, we're going to lower onto our backs. There's actually a whole bunch of other cool moves we could do, but that's for next time, guys. So from here, if you want, you can do some like sit-ups and boat where you lift your legs. You're making a V with your body, and you use your abs to lower down. <sighs> Protein. <laughs> okay, curl up into a ball here. Give yourself a hug and I like a gentle motion here. So rocking from side to side, massaging your spine. If you want, you can use your hands to guide your knees in circles. This helps with your hips that we've just really worked out. We've done a lot with our hips today from deer to pigeon, some cheetah, some butterfly. Okay, big hug in. And we're going to keep the right knee in, take the left leg down, hug that right knee in. We're going to do a twist. So inhale, exhale, twist. So you're guiding your knee over, but you want to keep your shoulders down. When you do twists, keep the shoulders grounded. Your leg it can go all the way over, or it might only go a little bit. And if you want, you can use a strap here to help out. Find your twist, keeping those shoulders down. You can look to the opposite side. Breathing into it to relax. Also, if you straighten your leg, you're going to need a different stretch than if you have it bent. Actually, straight feels pretty good to me today. And your arms can go wherever they need to. Usually, like a T pose or up like goal pose works pretty well. Thanking your body for the hard work. Inhale, draw that knee back up. Give it one more hug and switch. Hugging in your other knee. And then tick-tock it over. 
guiding with your hand, keeping your shoulder blades down as you cross over on the other side. Maybe you're looking the opposite direction. Maybe you straighten your leg. Do what feels different and good on the opposite side. Two more breaths here. And then bring it back in, both knees in, give yourself a hug, any last movements you need. We're going to do one bridge before we go into our final resting pose. So for bridge, plant your feet so your heels are near your hips. You should be able to touch your heels with your fingertips. Then make sure your feet are hip distance apart. In bridge, you're lifting your hips, so your pelvis. It doesn't have to be very high, and your hands can be down, pressing your palms down. You really want to feel the press in your shoulders. All right, let it down. We'll do two more. When you're ready, press down with your hands, shoulders, feet, lifting the hips, literally just tilting the pelvis. It could be as high or as low as you need. The higher you go, the more you want to actually squeeze your thighs together, and that'll give you a little more lift. Exhale, let it down. One more time, option for wheel if you have it in your practice, inhaling up, finding your bridge, pushing with the feet, shoulders, spiraling the hips in towards each other, keeping the chin tucked in, exhale, let it down. Good job, guys. Again, any last movements you need, we're going to go into corpse pose or savasana, which is the final resting pose. It's literally just stretching out, feet out. Palms can be up to get energy down to ground. I like to call this Haida pose number two because Haida always slips and falls in the rain and ends up with his back messed up. So he's just laying in the rain in corpse pose. Make any last movements, maybe you need a blanket over you. Maybe you want to lower the lights a little bit. Eyes close, come back to your breathing. And I am going to guide you through the next couple minutes and I'll call you out for when you should be getting up. But for now, take a few minutes. Begin to release all the stress in your body. So as we started with Tantrum Asana, now we are screaming. This time we're gonna do just a full body tightening. So I'm gonna tell you to scrunch all the muscles in one part of your body and then let them all go. So start with your feet and toes and ankles and scrunch them up really, really tight. And then let them go. Now your legs, squeeze, 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 tighten everything in your legs. Let it go. Now do your feet and your legs and your core. Squeeze it in really tight. Go, 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 go. And uh, release. Feet, legs, core, arms begin to Take your hands and make them to balls and tight, tighten your arms and your feet and everything. Tight, 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 and let it go. Now include your shoulders. Scrunch them up. Everything in your body up to your shoulders. Squeeze it in. You've got this. Ah! And let it go. Finally, scrunching all the muscles in your face, your nose, your mouth, your whole body. Take it all in and just squeeze it really, really tight. And let it go. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Let any other tightness you have go right now. Focus on your breathing. And as I said, you'll have a couple minutes to relax. If you notice thoughts, just acknowledge them and let them continue to go on. Don't linger. Come back to your breathing. And in a couple minutes, I will call you out. Enjoy this savasana.
we're going to slowly begin to reconnect. Finding your place. Start by taking a deep breath in. And sighing it out. Enjoying the last bit of relaxation that you deserve after such a good yoga practice. Start by inviting some gentle movement into your fingers and toes, maybe circling your wrists and ankles. You can invite movement into your body, maybe going into a big body stretch, <laughs> pointing your toes, reaching up and above you. Oh, a deep breath in. And as you're ready, roll to one side into a little ball, just like Retsuko, when she didn't want to get out of bed, just curled up in the fetal pose. This is the in-between, going from corpse to fetal, and then back into life after. As you're here, I'll remind you that relationships aren't about recognizing faults, but accepting them. Just as in a Gretzico, sometimes we fall in love with the idea of a person or a thing, rather than what is real. Remember as you go on to stay present, recognize and appreciate the reality in front of you. This includes the relationship that you have with yourself. Accept if you found balance in this practice or imbalance. Accept that you continue to grow and explore your relationship with yourself. Begin to come to a seated position. Again, it can be cross-legged, your eyes can be closed, or you can invite a gentle gaze. Straighten up, rolling your shoulders back and down from your seated position. Inhale your hands up. Exhale down. One more time. Inhale up. Exhale down. And this time before we finish, we're going to do a little mudra together. So we're going to take our two middle fingers, put them down, make our little rage horns, hold them up into like a nice little goal post here. Take a big breath in, and we're going to do one rage out. Ready? Inhale in. Rage out. Good job, guys. Inhale, hands up. Exhale down. Exhaling. Let's steal our practice together. And I bow to you in thanks for sharing this crazy Agretzko yoga with me tonight. Namaste. Thank you guys. And I hope to see you September 5th for our Smooth Stream Half Day Podcast Extravaganza. My, exter my internal screams are now external and we'll do this all over again then. Thanks guys.